Hi everyone, hope you all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about complete configuration that you need to know for Microsoft Defender for Identity. So let me switch to my browser where I have signed into security.microsoft.com and then I'm going to click on this option of settings and then I'm going to click on this option of identities. So what you see now is MDI console or basically the console from where you can customize any option which is related to MDI. Now on all the sensors that you onboard fundamentally there is no as such GUI from where you can control all these settings. It's only the PowerShell module that you have or fundamentally you can enable uh, these settings which are required for more advanced monitoring. Okay. Now let's talk about the first option itself which is sensor. The answer is obviously very simple that this is the list of all the sensors which are onboarded in your environment and then you can go ahead and apply a type of filter or let's say multiple filters. In fact, you can add more filters as well, likewise created and version and then I can click on apply and this is the upper limit of the filters fundamentally which can be applied to the list of sensors. So the very first one is created, you can go ahead and apply a date filter here then you have type whether my sensor is domain controller or ADFS or ADCS then you have domains I mean if you have sensors from multiple domains you can go ahead and apply this filter and then this list will be customized as per the domain that you have selected then you have versions also available over here and then this option is of delayed updates but the question is what exactly this delayed update is all about okay now this setting when it comes to delayed update can be applied to each server so if i select the first one you can see i'm getting this option if i select the second one i'm also getting this option so this fundamentally means that assume that there are four different servers okay and two of them are in a state of default configuration which basically means that you have not enabled this particular setting however two of them are in delayed update state okay which fundamentally means that i just clicked on this option and i have enabled this delayed update for one of my adfs servers that is the only change that you have to do and you can see it here it is showing delayed update as enabled for my adfs there is no as such great difference fundamentally speaking from uh, the functionality perspective the only difference is that whenever there is an update which has been released for MDI then the servers with default configuration will start those particular updates automatically on that particular machine itself however uh, when it comes to uh, the machine with delayed update state on those particular machine these updates will be applied after 72 hours okay so it's that simple you can choose your servers to be in default configuration or you can choose your servers to be in delayed update state wherein if the server is selected in delayed update state then the sensor service or that or let's say the sensor on that particular uh, machine will get updated after 72 hours that is the only difference okay now let's talk about the second option which is activation now for those of you uh, who have seen this entire playlist this is something which i have explained in a lot more detail and that is assume that you have a server which is MDE onboarded and the server is domain controller and it is Windows Server 2019 or above. Then fundamentally you can just pick and choose the servers from here. You don't have to install the classic sensor on your domain controllers and all the telemetry required fundamentally speaking for your MDI to work that will start getting captured. So fundamentally from here itself you can just go ahead and enable or activate a machine MDE onboarded provided it is domain controller to be MDI enabled as well. Okay. Now if I talk about directory service account. Now fundamentally this is not something that will be populated by default or let's say this is not something which comes as a part of default configuration but if you are using ADFS fundamentally or let's say if you're onboarding ADFS servers for uh, MDI and in fact there are certain uh, detections that will only work once you have directory service account in place. So basically this is the account that's been used to read the entity information fundamentally speaking uh, from the domain controllers itself and it can be a group manager service account as well. 
However, this account is something which is required when you are implementing ADFS and ADCS detections as well, or you are onboarding ADFS and ADCS. So for those of you who have seen our ADFS video, we'll be able to relate why this service account is required. Okay. Now the next option is manage action accounts. Now by default, when it comes to domain controllers, or let's say when it comes to the actions that can be implemented, you, you can either disable the user or you can request for a password change in your on-prem environment. These are the two changes that can be triggered. Now by default, the machine on which sensor is installed, it uses the local account, NT authority system account, fundamentally speaking, to go ahead and make all these changes. So let's say if I click on this option, okay, this is what you can read it from here. Okay. Defender for identity allows you to make or sorry take remediation actions targeting your on-prem uh, active directory accounts in the event that an identity is compromised to take these actions mdi needs the required permission to do so and this is the list of all the permission now you can read it from here by default mdi sensor impersonate the local system account of the domain controller and perform these actions okay now fundamentally speaking you can use either the local account or let's say you, you if you want you can create your own account as well a dedicated account with the required permission and you can add it here now the next option is to go ahead and enable radius accounting setting if at all this information is something that you want to monitor the next set of option is alert thresholds now if you remember when i was talking about how you should go ahead and test mdi then then in the initial phase you want to know how the alerts are getting generated then you should keep this option enabled otherwise you can just disable this particular option and in fact this option is not required for your production environment then not for all the kind of uh, alerts however for some alert types or incident types you can go ahead and set the threshold level but the question is what exactly this threshold level is all about it basically means that how much surety or let's say how much confidence is required before mdi can go ahead and generate an alert or an incident of these specific detection rule types fundamentally which you can see it over here okay so now you can see if i talk about security principle reconnaissance on medium mode this detection triggers immediately and disables the filter of popular queries in the environment low mode includes everything in medium plus a lower threshold for queries single scope enumeration is also something which is captured if it is set to low so depending upon the results that you're getting for your environment you can go ahead and customize this section as well now in the about section you only have your workspace id your workspace name again the set of information is something that can be used for uh, let's say network testing or knowing whether if all the endpoints are reachable or not then you have the entity tag section wherein you can add go wherein you can fundamentally add let's say users device and groups which are sensitive for which you want each and every activity to be monitored or let's say which you think can be a part of literal movement uh, attacks right then you have honey token this basically means that these are the accounts that you use or these are the devices that you have created and you have just kept them to lure the attackers fundamentally uh, and assume that there is an account which i have intentionally created which is exchange admin i have given the name exchange admin and i have not used that account and nobody is using that account intentionally but then an attacker, he was trying to compromise or let's say he was trying to discover all the accounts that exist and then he found uh, or then he finds fundamentally that there is an, there is an account uh, likewise exchange admin. So in this case, the moment any activity is triggered for that particular account which you have created, which you are not using, but you have just kept it as a honey token account, the moment there is any activity, it will be triggered and you'll come to know. Then MDI by default has this capability of detecting exchange servers. If there are any, it will be detected by default. Or if you want, you can go ahead and manually tag uh, the machines as well. Okay. Now, if I talk about 
globally excluded entities if you want or let's say by doing the analysis you'll come to know that there are certain users which are creating false alarms or there are certain domains or there are certain devices or IP addresses that you want to whitelist you can do it from here the next set of option is exclusion by detection rule so fundamentally here whatever you will add it will become or it will be excluded from all the detection types however you can click on this option and then you can just choose any of this uh, rule and go ahead and apply exclusion specifically related to devices or IP addresses okay so this section uh, when it comes to exclusion by detection rule is the exclusion per rule here it is exclusion for everything now if at all there are any health issues which have been reported or let's say any health alerts which are getting created then fundamentally your global admin and your security admin will get the email by default however if you want you can go ahead and add more recipients depending upon your requirement and the last one is syslog notification again this is something that can be used for your seam integration fundamentally if you're using any third party uh, solution or if there is any server where you want all uh, the information from MDI to be sent or to be uh, let's say forwarded it can be a alert or it can be a health issue then you can choose particular uh, this particular set of option where you can define the IP of the machine and the port on which this information can be forwarded so this was fundamentally I mean everything that you need to know when it comes to customizing any setting that's available for MDI and in the next video I'm going to talk about how you should go ahead and perform advanced hunting related to MDI or let's say the tables fundamentally or the queries that can be implemented uh, for MDI and how you can access the data through API when it comes to let's say a specific table data or let's say incidents or alerts so if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time